Welcome to the Episcopal Church of the Good Shepherd. For those watching this as an archive video, we are beginning our feed about 10 minutes early. You may fast forward to the beginning of worship if you like. Today we're having a Thanksgiving in celebration for the life of Gilbert Lopez Esparza. Thank you for joining us.
Good morning and welcome to the Church of the Good Shepherd. As we observe today, remember with honor and love the life of Gil Esparza. Please stand for our opening hymn as the casket is brought in, all things bright and beautiful.
I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. All who have faith in me shall have life, even though they die. And all who have life and have committed themselves to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. After my awaking, the Lord will raise me up, and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see, and my eyes behold the one who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in oneself, and none becomes one's own master when one dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord, and if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our brother Gil. We thank you for giving him to us, his family and friends, to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, whose wisdom is beyond our understanding, deal graciously with all of Gil's loved ones in their grief. Surround them with your love, that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss, 
but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings from Scripture. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Please join me in praying this portion of Psalm 139. Lord, you have searched me out and know me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wondrous for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where I can go then for my spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the utmost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night, darkness is not darkness to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. All who are led by the spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, 
who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Welcome, everyone. It's good to see you all here today 
to remember and honor Gil, a man who dedicated his life to curiosity and discovery. Gil also lived in a very intentional way to help make life easier and fairer for as many others as possible. Over his more than nine decades, Gill worked for advances in both science and justice, and that made for a full and fascinating life. I hope you'll take some time after the service to read Gill's entire obituary toward the end of the service leaflet, which was so full of detail that I had to shrink the font to fit it onto two pages. Use a magnifying glass if necessary, because it is well worth the read. And while there's not a reception planned today per se, I hope you'll all linger a bit afterward in conversation and share your memories of Gil with one another. The readings chosen for this service are the same readings that Gil chose for the funeral of his beloved bride, Judy, nearly 10 years ago. So we can receive them and pray with them as a gift from Gil himself. First, we heard a passage from the book of Isaiah, and it happens to be the very passage Jesus quoted at the beginning of his ministry in the synagogue in his hometown of Nazareth. This episode is recounted in Luke's gospel. Jesus reads this passage with all its divine language of promise. And then he announces that he is the one who is here to make it real. Preach good news to the oppressed. Bind up broken hearts. Free prisoners. Proclaim the time of forgiveness of all debts. Hold oppressors accountable for their actions. Comfort those who mourn. The people in Nazareth heard Jesus say all this, and they were impressed. I think they were excited at the prospect that the long-awaited Messiah might be one of their own, a hometown boy. Then Jesus started talking about how the center of his work would not be among his own people in his own hometown, but among those far beyond the community's boundaries. Jesus would choose to hang out with foreigners and outcasts and bring them healing and hope. This made the citizens of Nazareth so angry that they turned into a mob and tried to throw Jesus off a cliff. But Jesus stared them down and walked right through them and walked away. Jesus was on a divine mission to help those who were suffering but he would not allow it to be hampered by other people's ideas of who was worth helping. All are included. And if those closer to the center of the action feel slighted by the inclusion of those farther away, they'll just have to lump it. I'm inspired by so many details of Gill's life, but none more so than his work as a civil rights activist on behalf of Latin American immigrants. That's a hot button issue today for people around the globe as climate change and political unrest drive larger and larger migrations. Who belongs? Who is included? Who is deserving of our care and concern? But if you're going to follow Jesus, as I like to say, you might as well just strike the word deserve from your vocabulary. When you're walking in his footsteps, Human constructs like race and language and national borders don't even come into the equation except as barriers to break down. Nobody is left out. Love and care for those who are suffering are the top priorities. This perspective is fleshed out in the reading that Gill chose from Paul's letter to the Romans, which concerns the nature of suffering itself. All of us suffer. That's unavoidable in this life. The call from Jesus is to bear one another's suffering, not in fear, but in hope. After all, 
Jesus showed up as God among us and suffered right alongside us. Because he jumped into the pit with us, as it were, we can be assured that nothing can separate us from God. No way, no how, not ever, no matter what, not in life and not in death. The person who has already accepted suffering as inevitable is thus far more able to endure it than the person who just wishes the suffering would go away. But when we have other folks to help us bear it, the endurance of suffering can even be transformed into a form of eager longing. When will it get better? We don't know. But we do know that it will. Because nothing, literally nothing, can prevent that resolution. To accept this reassurance in the face of suffering is to be set free to live well, to live as Jesus did, bringing healing and comfort to those who need it most. We can dedicate our lives to the way of love by alleviating the suffering of others. Gil most certainly did. As Paul puts it, this makes us more than conquerors. Conquerors are those who merely force their way into self-comfort and even luxury at the expense of others. We have been given something far better, adoption as children of God. Now our hearts don't need to be troubled. We know how this ends. We all have a place. We all belong. This is what Jesus tells his disciples at the Last Supper in the passage I just read from John's Gospel. When he says, believe in me, he's saying, trust the way I've moved about in the world and follow my lead. He says this the night before he dies. Is this the lead we're supposed to follow? Well, yes. Yes, it is, because like suffering, death is also inevitable. We don't need to go looking for it. It'll come anyway. Some of us get to live to be 94 years old and live a deep, deep legacy of helping others bear their burdens. All the while, we have this promise from Jesus, I'm going ahead of you, but I'll come back to take you to myself. So walk the way of Jesus, speak the truth of Jesus, live the life of Jesus. This is how Christians in particular draw closer to God, by modeling our lives after the life of the one in whom we put our trust. Yes, the way of Jesus is the way of suffering and death, willingly, not as victims, but as lovers. When Jesus says, no one comes to the Father except through me, I believe that's what he means. The way forward lies through death. On the other side of death is pure joy. In the meantime, during this life, we do suffer, but we suffer in the knowledge of joy to come. And hopefully, this inspires us to reduce the suffering of others wherever we can. The only way toward God is to live life fully and to live it in love. When we do this, Christians believe, we find that we were walking the way of Jesus, whether we recognized it or not. All of that said, the purpose of Christianity is not simply to become good people. A lot of people think that's the purpose, but no, at best, that's a very happy side effect. We don't get to be good people all the time. We might describe Gil as a good person, and that's not wrong. But I think the term good person may sometimes actually be a harmful distraction. Because once there are good people, there are also bad people. And then we're right back where we started, trying to qualify who deserves good things and who doesn't. That knocks us off the way of Jesus. I think Gil understood this too. Do good things, yes. Help others, yes. But never fall into the trap of thinking you're a good person. 
as if you had no need of help from the one who helps us all. The reassurance Jesus gives us is a free gift. Nobody is unworthy to receive it because everybody is unworthy to receive it. Isn't that a scandal? Jesus doesn't give us this gift because we earned it, only because we need it. So today, here we are together, and we miss Gil. He lived an incredibly long and good life. Jesus says, don't let your hearts be troubled, but of course our hearts are going to be troubled. Still, today we celebrate Gil's life. He did his best to follow in the way of Jesus, to preach good news to the oppressed, to bind up broken hearts, to free prisoners, to forgive debts, to hold oppressors accountable, to comfort those who mourn. The best way we can honor Gill's legacy is to go out and do the same. Amen. Please stand with me as able. In the assurance of eternal life given at baptism, let us proclaim our faith and say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <laughs> For our brother Gil, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am resurrection and I am life. I'm so sorry, I put it down and I didn't put it back. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Okay, here we go. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. Okay. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Gilbert and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us. You wept at the grave of Lazarus. Your friend, comfort us in our sorrow. Here. You raise the dead to life. Give to our brother eternal life. Hear us, O oh Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our brother to the joys of heaven. Here. Our brother was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all your saints. He was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our brother. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our brother Gil, who was reborn by water and the Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that his death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. 
Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you all. So glad that you're here. You may be seated for just a moment before we continue. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, Colleen. It's, it's, it's the little flaws that make us human, right? <laughs> not to mention, this is not Dale's funeral. It's Gil's funeral. Every time I try to catch all those. And, um, so... So glad that you're with us at Good Shepherd today. I just want to say a word before we continue. Um, first of all, at following this service, the uh, the committal will take place at Tahoma uh, National Cemetery. And Kate, did you have instructions for, for folks who wanted to attend? All right, so folks can stop off at Marlene's on 320th or wherever if, if you want to go. Just repeating for those who, repeating for those who couldn't hear the, the yeah, 115 is is when they want us to line up. But yeah, the the family and and some folks will stop by Marlene's on the way. Um, and I, I want to say a word about Holy Communion. Um, at the Church of the Good Shepherd in the Episcopal Church, we celebrate Holy Communion at most funerals. Um, it is a good and right thing to do. Um, that if you, so I want to make sure everybody knows you are invited to this table. Um, this this table is not the property of the Episcopal Church. It's not uh, that you know the property of Good Shepherd. It is Jesus' table, and you are welcome to receive the body and blood of Christ. Um, it is specifically for the baptized. If you are not baptized, you're welcome at the table anyway as a guest. And I just want to extend that invitation. All are welcome here. If for any reason you don't want to receive, that's fine too. But I would invite you to come up anyway. And if that's the case, cross your arms over your chest as an indication to me. And I'll give you a blessing in the name of the Holy Trinity instead. Um, however, whatever degree you want to participate is absolutely fine. So... We will now continue. Oh, I'll say one more word. Um, we also take up an offering every time that we celebrate Holy Eucharist. And at the request of Gil's children, uh, today's offering will go to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, which was a cause that, that Gil supported and uh, that uh, he, would, he, would, he would like to hear that donations were made there in his name. So that's what we're going to do next. O Lord, our God, you are worthy to receive glory and honor and power because you have created all things. And by your will, they were created and have their being. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways, but we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. Holy, holy Lord, God of our Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Let's keep the feast. Alleluia. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer, redeemer of the world, give us your peace, give us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Please stand with me as able. At the bottom of page 14, let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that in your great love, you have fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ, and have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comfort in affliction and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crying, but the fullness of joy with all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. For sorrow and pain and no more, neither sign You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind. And we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Gil. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Amen.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Mm -hmm.